good uh, for everyone who are here this morning uh, that we are uh, here to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth and of course uh, look at the word of God study the word of God and um, listen for what God has to tell us this morning be able to apply uh, that in our lives uh, as we as we continue to live the Christian life so let's continue to pray for our ministry especially um, our uh, anniversary missions conference and the uh, Bible school that will be uh, oh, we'll be starting after that. Let's pray for Brother Ponlu because uh, he's really um, praying that God will use him in, a, uh, in more ways uh, for the Khmer people. And uh, that is our prayer that uh, any time that the Lord will uh, call us to go somewhere else or probably uh, leave this country, that we will leave people who will continue to preach the gospel to their own um, to their own people so that uh, the Lord will continue to uh, save people here in Cambodia. So, patuloy po natin pag-pray. And also, the outer chest, let's pray that uh, we'll have a smooth uh, start of our outer chest. Uh, we have no idea what to expect uh, sa chanso. Uh, if, if we will have the same uh, people as that, that were coming before or we'll have uh, completely new sets of uh, young people that will come. But uh, I know that the Lord uh, will use that place. Please continue to pray for uh, the family that are helping us, that's helping us there. Pa uh, Pastor Samnang. Uh, teacher Samnang and uh, uh, Teacher Nimol. Pray for their family and their three kids. The Lord will supply their, continue to supply their needs and that the Lord will bless us in order to be able to uh, help them as well and uh, their growth in faith. Din po. So continue to pray for that, even for the rest of our outreaches, uh, that the Lord will bless. And we are so blessed that we have preachers who uh, really give their uh, time and effort for outreaches and to, to evangelize the lost uh, of Cambodia, They're willing to be used by God. So we praise the Lord for that. And uh, this morning we have... Uh, uh, teacher Emily and Teacher Christine with us. They they work with us at uh, Florida One, and uh, the Teacher uh, uh, Emily told me that uh, uh, Christine wa wanted to uh, be uh, baptized because she has uh, received the Lord Jesus Christ. But as you know, that here in our church we have uh, procedures that we go uh, that we uh, apply. Uh, before we go to this uh, to baptism and accepting members in our church uh, we, we do have uh, bible studies and we have people available to be uh, going to teach the bible uh, and, and to explain uh, what our church believes and um, uh, really explain thoroughly the the preaching of repentance and the faith towards our lord jesus christ and uh, that means that when we are truly saved and uh, i i admire teacher emily her uh her willingness to just really uh, share the word of God and uh, to to make sure that people uh, understand uh, how we are how to get saved and that is through repentance uh, you know turning your back uh, uh, turning back turning your back uh, from those things that we believed before especially in the Philippines as Catholics we believe that our works can save us uh, all of these things a lot of tradition. Uh, last night I was listening to uh, this group. It's the uh, the group is called uh, the Gathering, and last night their topic was about the infallibility of uh, Scripture, and they open up the the topic of uh, what Catholics believe. They don't only believe that uh, the Scriptures are perfect and infallible, but they also believe that traditions are infallible, and uh, those th that is the main difference. This uh, uh, the, the Catholics, their faith, they place it on traditions and what they do, their works, good works, and we do believe that Christians are to do good works, but it is after we are saved that we do good works. So we're not saved because of the good works that we do. We are saved by grace through faith, but through faith that works. And so that is a very clear uh, uh, Paul preached to the uh, to the Greek, it says that uh, repentance to our, our Lord Jesus, uh, repentance and faith towards our Lord Jesus Christ, and that is as long as we understand that, we understand what it means to be a member of the local church, then we are uh, uh, we gladly accept people to be a member of our church. So uh, this morning, let's continue to pray. Uh, teacher Emily, will, uh, Teacher Christine will be going back to the Philippines uh, probably at the end of February. Let's pray that she will continue to learn the Word of God and find a church that would uh, really. Uh, nurture uh, her faith and continue to teach her the word of God. So we have read our uh, text this morning. 
uh, led by our uh, uh, British uh, uh, brethren, a uh, brother here, uh, brother uh, uh, Deo, and we we uh, saw uh, the passing uh, of of God's people uh, across a crossing of the Jordan River, and uh, that's what we're going to look at today. And we're going to see uh, pick up some principles as we go along, and as as we usually uh, do when when uh, when we go through the uh, some chapters in the Old Testament. But before that, let me allow me to pray this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you for uh, this morning. We thank you for everything that you have already accomplished, uh, even uh, for the Sunday school that we had for the question and answers for those who are who ask their questions, Lord, and uh, um, and uh, and the clear answers that you have given us uh, through your word. We pray, Lord, that we continue to have that desire in our hearts to continue to know more, to con- to understand the Bible, and um, just just to uh, have a bet- deeper relationship with you through uh, more knowledge uh, according to uh, about your word and about you, dear Lord. I pray, Lord, as we go through Joshua chapter 4, as we see the great miracle that you did for uh, the people of Israel, that we also look at the great things that you have done in our lives and that we remember them and that because of those things, we have, uh, we will, we'll, our, our faith will be strengthened and that we will be more courageous to uh, achieve more for you because uh, you have proven again and again, dear Lord, that you will never fail us, that you will always be there uh, um, to do the work that you want us to do, to accomplish it through us, dear Lord, through the things that you have you are doing uh, inside of us. I pray that you uh, help me as I preach. Forgive us of our sins, dear Lord. Um, we thank you, Lord, for the privilege even to preach, for the privilege to be here to study your word. And uh, we praise you for that. And I pray that uh, your word will accomplish uh, its purpose this morning. For all these things, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, um, we have seen in the previous chapter, uh, chapter 3, which we studied last Sunday, that uh, God gave instructions to Joshua and the people of Israel regarding uh, crossing the Jordan River. And uh, we have seen um, what God told Joshua to tell the people, and that they have to prepare themselves for a miracle that, that God will be doing. Uh, Joshua said that, uh, uh, sanctify yourselves, because uh, this day, God will do something uh, amazing in, in, in front of your eyes. And God even told Joshua that, I'm going to lift you up in the sight of the people. I'm going to show these people that through you, I'm going to make, I'm going to do uh, great things uh, for Israel. That through uh, you allowing me to use you, through you, the people will know my might. People will know my power. And that even the heathen, even the people that you're going to be battling, they might fear. That they will see that uh, uh, the God that lives is is, is with Israel. And that is uh, something that we saw last time, the great hand of God. Then as, as, as also uh, uh, told us, uh, uh, looking at our lives, uh, uh, Brother Jeremiah told us that it's not just in the great miracles that God uh, uh, works in our lives, but even in those things, uh, uh, in those things that may not seem as great. But it is always God working in our lives. And the only difference uh, in seeing that work of God or that hand of God in our lives is if we're looking through the eyes of faith. Because sometimes what we, we think that that's what's happening in our lives is because of what we did, because of our effort, because of someone being kind. But what we don't realize is that God uses these people, places all of these things, uh, puts everything in place in order uh, to help you. It may not seem that miraculous, but that is also the work of God. That is also the hand of God. And, uh, and if we don't see, look, at uh, things or circumstances through the eyes of faith, through uh, uh, through uh, it, uh, um, glass that uh, that sees that everything that's happening in our lives comes from God, then we these things will not help us uh, in our faith. In um, before we go to our uh, study, I, I remember one of the point that I uh, made during our my daily devotion in 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 uh, in my page that um, it says there that every good thing comes from God. And everything that happens to you, if as long as it's good, it comes from God. Okay, nothing bad comes from God. And sometimes even the things that uh, seem bad at first, it also comes from God. But then, and eventually, we will see why it's good for us. And 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 we have to be thankful for that. That's why uh, Christians are or believers are urged by 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 the uh, the writers of the Bible to be in a thankful attitude, to always be grateful to God. Why? Because even the smallest things, the, the air that you breathe, it comes from God. Everything that, that, that uh, we are experiencing, your job, everything, it comes from God. All those good things, it comes from God. And God continues to bless us. The Bible says that, that the Lord is, um, uh, what do you call this, uh, 
but give it to all men liberally and upbraided that it means that he's someone who continues on giving and giving and giving good things whether we see it or not god is continually uh, to continually giving us good things and through those things if we realize that our, our faith will always be strengthened why because time and time again god will prove his faithfulness in our lives just like here uh, uh, with the people of Israel in Joshua chapter 4 they are faced with a raging river we, we learn that this river is uh, uh, normally a peaceful river it's easy to cross but during that time God asked them to cross a raging river a river that is overflowing that's really impossible to cross without uh, uh, without using anything much less by foot Okay? Kahit na po hindi pa raging itong river na to kung wala rin namang bangka at kailangan din ng langoyin mahirap pa rin but God will do something miraculous. And, and here in chapter 4, what we see here is a really, really short chapter. We will not stay long this morning. But what we see here in chapter 4 is God wants them especially to remember this day. Remember this day. Remember this thing that I'm going to do. And God asked them to do something in order to, to make them remember. Not only them, but the people that will come after them. And maybe the people, even until now, because of what God said, because God allowed it to be written in the Bible, we still remember what God did to them. We may not have seen it. Uh, I'm sure we would have loved to see it. But God uh, wants us to remember that. And even in our lives, God has done a lot of great things in our lives. Uh, big things, small things, but God is always doing things in our life. But time and time again, we forget. We forget uh, even uh, even the time that God saved you that moment some of us may have forgotten that already even a time that that you were really in need but God used someone to provide for your needs do you still remember that day do you still remember when God used a place or, or, or God talked to you you were in a place somewhere and God talked to you God dealt with you and then you made a decision for the Lord those things now God also wants us to remember Remember the things that He has done in our lives. Remember uh, the, the miracles. Why? Because all of these things, as we can think about them, as we remember, then the, uh, it will give us strength to keep on going for the Lord. Kaya nga po, hindi lang basta natin dapat inaalala yung, you know, the devil, what the devil wants, uh, wants to, us to remember are the failures in life. That's what he wants to remember. He wants you to, he wants you to remind you that hey, what you're doing right now, you shouldn't be doing that because you're this, because you're that, because you did this, because you did that. And if we dwell on that, we will be discouraged. But you know, whenever the devil tells you that or puts that in your mind, you, know, you simply agree with him. That's true. I'm really a bad person. I'm really a person that's not worthy to be doing anything for the Lord. But by God's grace, He allows me to do it. That's why I will keep on doing it. That's why uh, what we should be focusing on are the things that God did uh, uh, in our lives. And, and, and the, the, those great miracles. And as we always have done when we look through the book of the old, uh, books in the Old Testament, uh, we're going to pick up principles along the way here in uh, here in here in Joshua chapter four, and and my, really my main point here is to uh, f to challenge us this morning to remember the great things that God has done, and not forget about them. Remember uh, those uh, disciples of God, of Christ, w when when He was still here on earth, uh, the day that Christ fed the five thousand. You know, remember that that more than five thousand people are hungry following him and, and 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 his disciples these people they, they don't know where where to get food to feed them but god in really a miraculous way uh uh, uh took uh five nababaliktad ko to lagi eh, five loaves of bread and two fish or five fish two bread something like that but definitely not enough for to feed more than five thousand but that day god gave thanks christ gave thanks and then they were able to feed these people may natira pa you know, you know what happened after that? Here in Mark chapter 6, verse 46. Let's, read, let's start uh, uh, in verse number 46. The Bible says, when they, And when he had sent them away, he departed into the mountain to pray. And when, he, and when even was come, the ship was in the midst of the sea, and he alone on the land. So, so his disciples were following him, who were uh, with him, were on, a, were on a, a boat, on a ship. And he saw them toiling in rowing, for the wind was contrary unto them. And, ab and about the fourth watch of the night, he cometh unto them walking upon the sea, and would have passed by them. And when they saw him walking upon the sea, suppose it had been a spirit, and cried out. For they all saw him, and were troubled. And immediately he talked with them, and he said unto them, Be of good cheer, it is I, be not afraid. And he went up in unto them into the ship, and the wind ceased, and they were sore amazed 
in themselves beyond measure and wonder. So what we, what we see here was that the disciples were, were afraid because of the storm as normally ever, uh, everyone would be, but then they saw Christ and then Christ calmed the, calmed the storm. In verse number 52, it says here, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves, for their heart was hardened. If you realize that this moment was just a day after the miracle of the feeding of the 5,000, that these people were even afraid for their lives, knowing that Christ was going to be with them. You know, sometimes uh, we miss the miracle. The, the reason why the Bible says here in verse 4, 52 is very clear, for they considered not the miracle of the loaves. Not that they have for, forgotten about it, but they don't really understand what Christ was showing them in that miracle. Christ was showing them that I am God, that I can do miraculous things, that I can do these things. This is me. This is me that you're, you're, you're with this person who can do this. But these people over and over again had little faith. Had, had, uh, had times where they fear, had times where they, when they doubt uh, the Christ that, that, that they were with, but they didn't really understand that. And sometimes, yung po yung sa buhay natin, we miss the things that God is doing. Why? Because we lack faith in God. Why? Because we don't realize that the things that are happening in our lives are really uh, from God, and really uh, it's because of the hand, in the hand of God. And sometimes it happens because we are uh, too self-centered. Sometimes it happens because we, we think about uh, our, our mind is just really looking at the earthly things. Masyado tayo nakafocus sa sarili natin. Nagkaroon tayo ng pagpapala, uh, uh, it's me. Di ba? Um, sa inyong mga malalaki ang sweldo niya, mas, malalaki ang sweldo dyan, oh, it's me. Kasi masipag ako. Uh, ang dami kong ganito, ganyan. Pero it's not you. It's all because of God. And if, and if we fail to realize that and you fail to acknowledge that, then nasasayang. Those, those things that God is doing for you are being wasted. Why? Didn't strengthen your faith. Why? Because you don't realize who did it for you. Right, so God wants them to remember this time. Going back to Joshua, God says, I want you to remember this thing that I'm going to do for you. Right this moment, I'm sure that that generation of the Israelites, those who will cross that river, will never forget that time. If, if you're the ones who cross that river, that God stopped that river for six miles, Right? And, and, and that raging river, uh, you crossed on dry land, and after you crossed, God just uh, 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 brought everything back. I'm sure you will never forget that day. Uh, if there's something that you will remember until you die, it's that moment. Why? Because it's the great miracle, something that no one can do. You will never mistake that for a trick. You will never mistake that for Joshua's great planning. It's only God. That generation will remember that. But Christ uh, or God's purpose was for the generation after and more generations after that will, 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 will remember what God, the miraculous things that God has done for their lives. You know, sometimes God works through our generation or for, for our generation, uh, uh, in our generation in order to, uh, uh, to, to show the next generation as well the great things that Christ has done. Kaya nga, maganda rin pong alalahanin yung mga ginawa ng Panginoon pa sa ating mga magulang. Maganda rin pong alalahanin yung ginawa ng Panginoon to, uh, 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 sa mga previous generation that came uh, before us. That's why when you listen to old pastors preaching behind the pulpit, they share their experiences, they share the great things that God has done. You just praise God and you expect God to do the same for you. And then you have that courage to go forward. Why? Because if God did that for them, God will do it for me. Right, so, so these are uh, uh, the monuments that God wants us to remember. Not only to remember, but we will see as we read, to pass on to the next generation. To tell them what God did sa ating buhay. Not to be ashamed of the things that God has done, but to be bold enough to proclaim the great things that God has done in our lives. Ver let, let's go to our uh, uh, verses here. Verse number one, it says, And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, So God is seen here again talking to Joshua, telling Joshua what to tell the people. And during those times, it is the way God talks to the people. So God talks through Moses, tell the people, now through Joshua to tell the people. After that, God will be talking to the prophets. But to our time today, God doesn't use a person, uh, uh, God doesn't talk to a person to, to, to tell you the message of God. Why? Because we already have the Bible. Right? So today, wala na pong propeta. Today, wala na pong mga extra revelations that God is, uh, uh, is, is revealing to a certain person in order to teach His people. Today, what happens is that God already gave us His Word. His pastors, His preachers will read His Word, will understand His Word by the, grace, uh, by the help of the Holy Spirit, and will preach His Word to the people. 
Right? Nothing outside the Word of God. If someone will today will, will, will stand behind the pulpit and proclaim that God talked to me last night and here's what He wants you to do, then you run away from that person. Whatever is going to say is nonsense. Why? Because God doesn't talk, talk to us in this way anymore. But to, to, uh, during their time, here in, here in Joshua, God is talking to Joshua in order to give his message to the, to the people. Why? They didn't have the Bible by, uh, back then. It was, uh, they were relying on the people that God is using uh, in our lives. Today, these are the preachers. And if, in, if we preachers will, will act like, a, like prophets or, or like, like Joshua or Moses, then that is not the job that God has called us to do. So here it says here that not all of them, we realize that not all of them have passed uh, through the river yet. Why? Because at least Joshua and the 12 men that he asked them to choose back in chapter 3 were still there. We see it in verse number 2 and 3. It says here, Take you 12 men out of the people, out of every tribe a man. And command ye them, saying, Take you thence out of the midst of Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and ye shall carry them over with you, and leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge that night. I will say, no, uh, but I don't know about you, but if it was me crossing over that Jordan, I will not be walking. I will be running. Uh, because, kahit na sabihin na natin dry land yan, nakakatakot pa rin yung may kita mong baka, baka mabitawan ng Panginoon, patay tayo dito. But these 12 men, and even the priests, they are in, in the most uh, risky position. Why? The priests were not allowed to leave until everyone has crossed. Siguro, bilisan, bilis, bilisan nyo. Sabi ng priest, siguro, uh, baka mabitawan na pano, patay tayo lahat dito. Hindi lang yun. Itong mga 12 men na to, kailangan pa nila magbuhat. So they cannot rush over. They have to take the stones and then obey uh, but, 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 what, uh, what God told them. And if you remember in chapter 3, Joshua told the people to choose 12 men out of every man, uh, out of every tribe a man. But Joshua didn't tell them what to do. Just say, pili lang kayo. Up until now, even Joshua didn't know why God asked me to choose these 12 men. You know, sometimes God talks to us like that. May papagawa sa atin, di matin na kung bakit. Why? Because back in chapter 3, God said, choose this man, but He didn't tell them why. But now we see why. You know, uh, do you have those moments in your lives where when God asks you to go somewhere, do something, uh, you see that clearly in the Word of God, that that's the will of God in your life and doesn't make any sense at all? Right? But let us realize that God never asks us to do something that He has no purpose for. Lagi po may purpose. Lagi po merong uh, uh, gusto ma-accomplish ang Panginoon sa buhay natin. To some of us, we don't know why God led us in this to this place. I remember uh, my dad, when we left uh, Laguna, his uh, mission field was Australia. And I, I remember being excited for that because it's a nice place, right? If we're going to Australia. But Dr. Kaysen challenged him to, why don't you go to Cambodia and just look at the place? Maybe God will talk to you. And then God uh, 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 used that time to, 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 to challenge my dad to go here instead. Uh, back then, I'm sure it does, didn't make sense. Uh, uh, didn't really make a lot of sense to him. But now we understand. Why did God lead us to this place? Because this is where He wants us to be. This is where God will use us. So sometimes God asks people to do something that we, don't, we may not agree with. We may not understand why. But always remember that it's not our job to understand why. Not our job. Why? Because if, if, if this church is... Uh, kung, kung ang trabaho lang natin ay intindihin, napakahirap na, puro diskusyon na lang sa Panginoon ang gagawin natin. Our job is to just trust and obey. You know, sometimes the things that God asks us to do, we may not understand in this lifetime. No, but our job, again, is to trust and obey. Obey, step out in faith. And not, uh, um, no, our job is not to understand everything. So, so um, Joshua, God revealed to Joshua and these 12 men what they were going to be doing. I don't know, maybe if, if God revealed to them that moment when they were chosen, maybe they have refused. Maybe they refused. Oh, no, 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 I'm just, I'll just go with the other people, choose someone else. But God said, just choose, I'll tell you later. Now God told them what they were supposed to do. Uh, verse number 4, we see here, Then Joshua called the twelve men, whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. I may sound like a broken record, but again, in true servanthood fashion, Joshua just tells them exactly verbatim what God told him. I don't know what happened to preachers today. I don't know what happened to men of God today, but you, we, we rarely see preachers who do this anymore. 
who just takes the word of God, explains the word of God, challenges the people based on the word of God, and then no nonsense at all. You know, Joshua, we should, we should just, uh, um, what do you call this, uh, pattern our calling, those who are called to preach to what Joshua, what Moses was doing. Just take what God said, say to the people exactly how God wants it to be said. Just that. Wala na pong masyadong nonsense. And later, uh, uh, let, we're going to go back to that point again and again here in, in the book of Joshua. Verse number 6, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean ye by these stones? Then you shall answer them, that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, when it passed over Jordan, and the waters of Jordan cut off. And these stones shall be for a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Not that these stones that they're taking are magical stones. Walang magic po itong mga pinadala ng Panginoon sa kanila. But, think about it. When else can people take a stone out of the bottom of that river and put it somewhere else? This is the only time. Uh, so, G God, in, in a practical way, is, is, is letting them get that stone so that it will be unmistakable that my father, for the next generation, my father, God used my father to take stones at the bottom of that river. They didn't swim down there. Why? Because it's true that God uh, uh, parted the river and God made them uh, cross, uh, cross the dry land. So that's why God told them, capture this moment. This moment that I'm going to do, capture it, make a memorial, make a monument, and share it to your kids. You know, so I will be talking right now for a while to parents. No, capture the great things that God has done in our lives and make it a part of our conversations sa ating mga anak. Why? Because, you know, as, as, a, as a person who, who grew up in a Christian household, there's a really a danger where I can treat God or the things that I study in Sunday school as a fairy tale. Barbang, it's amazing. Uh, uh, a, a small boy uh, be, were, was able to kill a giant. So, para bang same lang na mga napapanood ko sa YouTube. Parang same lang yan ang mga napapanood natin na cartoons. So, God is uh, magic. God is power. But, when it comes from our parents, telling us the things that God had done in their lives, it becomes more real in the eyes of kids. Yeah, I remember when, when, uh, when my dad used to tell the story of uh, when Milka was a baby and they, they really had no more milk to give her. Uh, she's going to be hungry. All of a sudden, a member will just knock and give some milk. And the member was, will just say that, I don't know, Pastor, uh, but while, while I was in the supermarket, God uh, talked to me to buy some milk and give it to you. Uh, those, those things, mas lalo nagiging totoo sa mind ng mga bata. Why? Let's just keep on telling them what God has, uh, uh, what, what God did sa ating buhay. And, and, and uh, um, that, that will be uh, something that makes it more real sa buhay po ng mga bata. And then we realize that God really is working not only in the stories that we see in the Bible, but in the lives of my parents. So God told this, 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 this uh, people that you put that, uh, take those uh, um, um, stones, place it over there uh, where you're going to be camping and when your children ask you later God said here's what you're going to tell them so I remember when I was a kid probably uh, before we come here to Shimrip, 9-10 years old something like that I always wanted to be a pastor since I was uh, uh, since I remember I always wanted to be a pastor no matter how my grandfather discourages me to be a pastor that's what I always wanted to be uh, but when but when I was uh, when I became a teenager uh, you know, all of those things, then I, I didn't want to be a pastor anymore. You know, when I drifted away from the will of God, I don't want anything to do with the ministry. You know, but what, what helped me uh, come back uh, to that calling of God in my life is the th stories that I heard from my father, the stories that I heard from my mother, the, the, the experiences they've gone through, uh, uh, the hardships, but the way that God miraculously worked in their lives. I said, I want that as well. Uh, and even through the hardships and all of these things that they remained faithful and joyfully serving the Lord. That is the life I want. But compare it to the life of people who are not doing the will of God. They may have joy because of money. They may have this, but they don't have true joy. Why? Those people who are not doing the will of God, if you put them in hard circumstances, they will never be joyful. But you look at people who are doing the word of God, uh, the will of God, people who are really uh, uh, um, uh, obeying the Lord in their lives, no, mat no matter if you put them in any situation, they can be joyful. I said, I want that. 
I want an amen. That is the life that I want to be living. And because of this, I'm not saying, uh, because of these things that God has d- done through the lives of my parents, that has encouraged me to continue serving the Lord. Kaya nga po sa mga magulang, huwag po tayo mahiya to make that a part of our conversation with our kids. You know, I, just to tell our kids, this is what God did in my life. This is how God called me. This is how God made me realize that I should give my life for Him. This is how God saved me. Yeah, this makes it more real sa kanilang, sa, kanilang mga, sa kanilang mga isipan. Pero sa inyo pong mga single, bahala kayo, hindi para sa inyo yung verse na yan. Uh, meron kayong sarili yung problema. Okay, so, yun po. Uh, so, God told them, uh, God, God told them basically, this is what you're going to do. Um, um, when your kids ask you someday, this is going to be your answer, that God did this miracle in your life. So that, they will also know that God is powerful, that God can do that in their lives, that God will do that in their lives if they will have faith in Him. But sadly, Israel failed to do this a few generations. Because this, uh, if you keep on reading the Bible, the Old Testament, you see that this very monument that they uh, uh, place, this very place, this will be in Gilgal, I believe, is also the place where they uh, uh, worship uh, or disobeyed God. And why? Because, you know, when, when parents fail to pass on that knowledge of God to kids, then these kids will be the ones who will be rebellious towards God. You know, the, one of the saddest things that you see are pastors' kids who are living uh, a, a, a life outside of the will of God. One of the saddest things you see are, are, are big, uh, are big name pastors who are being used greatly by God, uh, no doubt, but their kids are not even attending the church where they pastor that their kids are not even faithfully serving the Lord. Why? Because those are the people that you expect na sila talaga yung mag- maglilingkod sa Panginoon pero sila pa yung nakakawala. Why? We cannot say that talaga 100% na kasalanan ng, ng magulang kasi may sariling desisyon ng bata. But if we keep, uh, keep God as a conversation, the things that God is doing as a conversation sa, sa ating mga tahanan, I'm sure that, that, that the kid will be able to see what God does in her life. That's why sa bahay natin, dapat may Bible. I remember in, uh, in the book of Exodus, I believe when God told the fathers, uh, ipaskil nyo yan sa mga post ng inyong mga bahay. Why? To remind your kids who God is, how powerful He is, and what He's going to be doing in your life. So, here in verse number 8, we see that the children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded and took up twelve stones out of the midst of Jordan as the Lord spake unto Joshua according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel and carried them over with them unto the place where they lodged and laid them down there. Again, we see here the state of mind that the, the Israelites are in. Diba? Remember in uh, chapter 1 verse 16 when they answered Joshua and said, All that thou commandest us we will do and whithersoever thou sendest us we will go. They are in that kind of state. Uh, they're, they're in that state of mind right now. No matter how ridiculous it is, we're going to do it. Right? Choose 12 men. Why? They didn't ask why. They just did. Uh, take up stones. Why? Did, nobody asked why. They just did. Why? Because they're in that zone of in, in, in their lives where I'm just going to do whatever God tells me. Going to go wherever God tells me. And however ridiculous it is, I'm going to obey. I wonder how many times na nagkaroon tayo ng ganong uh, uh, time sa buhay natin. Nang, nang ganong klaseng zone sa buhay natin where it doesn't even matter what it is. As long as I'm sure it's God who's telling me I'm going to do it. This is exactly what's happening here. That's why whatever Joshua tells them, they know it comes from God, they keep on doing, they keep on doing that. Verse number 9, um, Joshua set up 12 stones in the midst of Jordan in the place where the feet of the priest which bear the Ark of the Covenant stood and they are there unto this day. So, not, we if you read verse, uh, the first three chapters, even uh, the verses before this, verse 9, we don't see God telling Joshua to do this. Hindi po inutos ng Panginoon kay Joshua Because what God told Joshua was to take, uh, ask these 12 men to bring the stones over there. But God didn't tell Joshua to set up a, a, a monument for yourself as well. But we don't know if God really told him to do that. But the thing that we know is God did not rebuke him from do, for, for doing that. Hindi siya binawalan, but still Joshua did that. Why? Because remember in chapter 3, this day was also significant personally sa buhay ni Joshua because God told Joshua, today I'm going to lift you up in the sight of people. This is a very significant day for Joshua. This is a very important day for Joshua. That's why Joshua wanted to, to make a memorial of his own. 
You know, when, when God works, it's not always for uh, works for, for a group of people like, like a church or a family. You know, a lot of times God works uh, uh, for individuals as well. Kaya nga, kaya nga po kung paalalahan niyo po ano po yung mga ginawa ng Panginoon sa buhay natin, maalala po natin that God did it for you. And not only God did it for you, but God did it for you to remember. And when you remember God, God wants you to, uh, to use that in order to be a blessing to other people as well. So, I want to challenge you this morning, ano yung mga bagay na ginawa ng Panginoon sa buhay mo? Nakalimutan na po ba natin? Have we forgotten those things? Or, or if I ask you to look back in your life, is there a place that you remember right now that God has dealt, you, ha, dealt with you sa lugar na yun? Meron ba kayong naalala ang mga tao na ginamit ng Panginoon mightily sa buhay nyo in order to point you in the right direction? Or meron ba mga moments, tayong naalala those moments that God used in order to, to nudge us to the right direction, uh, to nudge us to, 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 to go for His will? And, and, and if you... Uh, and if you look back and you remember those things, wag na po nating kakalimutan. You know, if, if you want to make a monument, hindi sa harap ng bahay nyo, but things that will make you remember those things, great. Uh, I, I, I know some people who keep journals of what God does sa buhay nila. Do that. Why? Because it will help us if we keep on remembering that. And someday, if God will give us a family, we, uh, we, we, we share that to our family. And then we, we show to them uh, um, uh, what God did sa kanilang buhay. So, let's go, uh, sa ating buhay, let's go to verse number 11. And then we jump to 15 to 17. The Bible says here, And it came to pass, when all the people were clean passed over, that the ark of the Lord passed over, and the priest in the presence of the people. So, Verse 15, And the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Command the priests that bear the ark of the testimony, that they come out of Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come ye up out of Jordan. Now, I just want to transition a little bit to, to look at this a leadership principle we see here. These priests were the first one in, and they were the last ones out. And, and that is a great leadership principle. Hindi lang po yan principle sa, uh, sa, uh, sa secular world. But this is a great leadership principle because this is the essence of leadership. It is servanthood. Yung, leaders, yung mga leaders na sila yung nauuna, sila pa yung huling umaalis. Why? Because we, we rarely see that today. We only see that in the Bible. We are amazed. But not a lot of people are, are, are exemplifying this in their lives. I remember going to... When I was still in seminary, I think that was my first year or second year, studying in Bible school, there was a party. I, I'm not sure if it's a birthday or, uh, but there was a, you know, whenever there's a party, pag Baptist, there's always food. And uh, whatever, what, uh, whatever, uh, Baptists will always find whatever excuse they can find to cook some food and eat. No, so, so the Bible students, they always want to go to these parties. Why? Because then that's the only chance that we get to eat a lot. Uh, because in, in the Bible school, they only feed us um, uh, enough, okay? Uh, not, not, not that much. So, but I was not able to go. Uh, I, I, re I remained behind for some reason. I was asked to remain behind. But when they came, came back from the party, all of my schoolmates had a detention. I don't know what they did. So I asked them, what did you do? For the simple, they had the detention, detention for the simple reason. They ate before the pastor ate the party. They didn't know that they were supposed to wait for the pastor to take a plate, put food in his plate, put it in his mouth, and that is the cue that, oh, I can eat now. Well, it sounds ridiculous to you right now because we don't have that practice here in church because we don't care if our pastor eats or not as long as we eat. But this is a practice in the Philippines. Sometimes the pastor is going to eat, you can eat it, you can eat it, you can eat it, you can eat it. Pero walang yahan naman talaga tayo dito. Pero po, this is a practice in the Philippines. And, and this is, a, a, when you learn this kind of wisdom, na paunahan mong kainin, pakainin ng pastor mo, you're a great person. Pero hindi mo pinaunang pakainin si pastor, you have detention. So, this is the kind of leadership we have over there right now. You go to conferences, the food that you will eat, and the place where you're going to eat that food, depends on the number of people in your congregation. If you have a big church, you're going to eat in an air-conditioned room. If you're a small-time pastor, you eat together with the rest of the people. If you're a big shot pastor, you, eat, you, you sleep in a, 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 a good room. You, you have a good bed. But if you're just a small-time pastor, you sleep with, with, uh, in the bunk beds in, in the door. And, and I've seen th this with my own eyes. That's why you read the Bible, you compare it to leadership today, it's completely 
different. Leaders today have to eat first. Leaders today have to have a comfortable life. It may sound ridiculous. You're not allowed to buy a car that's better than your pastor's car. Not at all. So when I was there, the car that is also is Fortuner. But the Fortuner has different letters. My E, my G, my V. And I learned that the V is the top of the line Fortuner. But we have, there's a member who's very rich. He's a contractor. He can, but he's only, he only has a, a Jeep. Jeep lang ang sa kanya. He has all the money in the world to buy a very nice car. But he said, I'm not going to buy a car until my pastor has his car. So the pastor bought a top-of-the-line Fortuner with a V at the back. That means it's the best Fortuner. But he didn't buy that. He bought the next in line, the one lower than that, the G Fortuner. Why? I'm not supposed to have a better car than my pastor. I'm not supposed to have a better house than my pastor. Should be my pastor should have all the best things. Before you buy the latest iPhone, make sure that your pastor already has that. Or else, you're a rebellious member. Diba? Ganyan po. Kakaibang kakaiba sa Bible. You never see that in the Bible. Actually, Paul says, I can even ask money from you, but I'm not doing that. Why? I don't want, ayoko maging katitisuran. Uh, that's why it's stupid. And, and, and you're looking at these leaders that God used mightily in the Bible. There's no uh, sense of selfishness sa kanila. There's no sense of, you serve me because I'm the leader. No, I'm the leader. God placed me as a leader because He wants me to serve you instead. And that is, uh, that is what, uh, what, what these leaders are. Even this priest that, 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 uh, that is working uh, for God, they were the first ones in, they were the last ones out. Hindi sila yung, okay, una kami, kasi kami yung ano, leader dito, bahala na kayo dyan, muna kami. Pag kung, kung mabitawa ng Panginoon niyang tubig, uh, sorry na lang. Hindi po ganun, but God, as they mentioned, another thing, verse 18, and uh, this is a, a good verse, and it came to pass, when the priests that bear the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up unto the dry land, the waters of Jordan returned unto their place and flowed over all his banks as they did before. Imagine yun na lang yung pangyayari. So, when the last priest has uh, lifted up his uh, uh, feet from that uh, uh, place, the waters came rushing back. You know, what, what kind of image do we see that? It's like God closing the door. There's no turning back now. Wala nang atrasan. Why? Pinatawid na kayo. Kung gusto nyo matras, sige. <laughs> Alright, if you want to go back, swim. Because I'm not going to open that up again. So that means when we, when, 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 uh, when we decide to follow the Lord, you know, there should be no turning back. Now, these people, they spend so many years not being able to step into that land that God has already promised for them. But now that they said, yes, Lord, we'll do it, the, the moment that they step foot into Canaan, God closed the door. No turning back. This is exactly the equivalent of uh, burning all the bridges behind. Wala na. You're now in that land. Everyone that you're going to meet from now on is going to be your enemy. They would be, want to kill you. They would want to destroy your race because of what you're going to do. But you keep on going. There's no turning back. No turning back now. And, and uh, um, I hope and, and I know sa buhay po natin, there are many times that we thought about turning back. Many times that we thought about uh, this is not what I wanted to do. You know, again, going back to my Bible school days, a lot of times, naisipan ko na, what am I doing here? This is not what I wanted to do. Why? Because the first dinner that you get is one fourth galunggong and one, one cup of rice. What? Anong pinasok kong ito? <laughs> Tapos, paglilinisin ka ng CR, uh, back in Shimrip, I don't do that at all. You know, uh, un until my mom gets angry, I will not clean my toilet. But over there, they ask you to do these things. And then and, and, and I just, I just want to turn back and, and, uh, and looking back at it right now, it seems ridiculous. But there are many times when you are in that moment, gusto mo mag-quit ka na lang. You would want to quit. That's why I told Brother Pon Lu, I told him, I, we only printed the first year of the Bible school books because I think you will quit before the second year. <laughs> but but, I, I, but, but uh, let's encourage him to keep on doing. Why? There's no turning back. When you say yes to the Lord, the song says no turning back. Keep on going for the Lord. Why? If you turn back, if you think about turning back, it's like saying, Lord, I don't think you're really going to be able to accomplish these things through me. That is, um, 
insult to the Lord. Verse number 21 to 23. And he spake unto the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What mean these stones? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of Jordan from before you until you were passed over and the Lord your God did to the Red Sea as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea which he dried up from before us until we were gone over again we go back to that principle just saying exactly tignan nyo kung, kung paano in-instruct ng Panginoon si Joshua ganun din yung sinabi sa kanila word for word why? this is our job and I want to challenge the preachers to always keep this as our job ganito lang why? because sa atin po mga preacher it's our job to make it simple Hindi masyadong komplikado yung preaching of the Word of God. You know, kaya lang naman naging komplikado is because we want to be the first one to say something. That's why we try to overcomplicate things. We read the Bible. We try to give uh, complicated uh, things to the people. Why? Because I want to be uh, the first one to say this. The first one to be able fresh from the Word of God. I am the only one who saw this in the Word of God. You know, if you don't have that kind of attitude, God did not call you to preach. You know, I, I remember... Uh, uh, a pastor will look at the Old Testament and God told the is- people of Israel give me the first fruits of the land give me that first harvest offer it to me and I promise that I will make the rest of the harvest plenteous a pastor who would want to make things complicated will then preach on that chapter and say God wants us to give our first, year- first month salary and do it on an installment basis so that God will give us more, uh, God will make us rich the rest of the year. You know, para lang, you just, because you want to be the father of something, because you want to be the, 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 uh, uh, the person who, who began this movement, who, who, who was able to reveal from the Word of God. No one else was able to teach that except me. Because you want to do that, because you want to keep everything complicated, you're now leading the people astray. Kaya nga po bilang preachers, our only job is to faithfully read the Word of God, ask the Holy Spirit for guidance, for understanding, preach the Word of God to the people, whatever God has told us to preach, and then encourage them to obey the Word of God. Apply it in their lives. That's it. Wag na po natin, let's, let's not add to it. Let's not remove anything from it. Let's continue to preach what the Bible says. Kaya nga, that's why I enjoy, I enjoy uh, um, uh, preachers who just keep on going through uh, the Bible. Hindi sila masyado lumalayo. That's why I always encourage preachers to go through books and uh, keep on preaching through that book. Why? Like, like what we have uh, uh, just uh, concluded last week, the book of Hebrews. Because if you keep on going through those verses, you will not skip anything. You will be able to preach. You will not be able to use each, each verses in the Bible to, uh, uh, para ma, to help you teach what you want to teach. Because you will just be able to teach what the Bible is saying. Kaya nga po, uh, some, to some people, it will be boring. But to people who really love the Word of God, that is a great time. A person who stands here and preaching through the verses of the Word of God, helping us understand each verse, that is a time that we praise the Lord for. And we praise the Lord that our preachers in this church are like that. We do our best by the grace of God not to stray away from the Scripture, but just be able to preach from the Word of God. So verse number uh, 24, the last verse says here, that all the people of the earth might know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty that ye might fear the Lord your God forever. You know, we have this wrong uh, thinking about the Old Testament. When you read the Old Testament, sometimes we think God only cares for Israel and uh, He leaves everyone else basically helpless. No, God is working through Israel to show to the rest of the world His power and might. Hindi niya po, hindi niya po sinasabing, impero na lahat ng yan, Israel lang ang pinili ko. No, our, our God is not like that. Nothing can be farther from the truth. God said His will is for every man, every man to be saved. And, and in the Old Testament, it is Israel that God used in order to show to the world His power and might. And Israel were supposed to be the people who were uh, supposed to uh, tell the whole world about the power and the might of God. They failed. That's why today it is the church that God is using to, 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 uh, to do His work through the church and that the church to proclaim the gospel to every creature. No Old Testament Israel, ngayon tayo na po. It's God doing a great thing in our church. It's God using our church, people of our church, to show His greatness in our lives, to show His power in our lives. If so, are we faithfully proclaiming that so that the people of Shimrip will know about it? If we're not, we're failing as a church. No, the reason why God does this is so that people will praise Him. 
The reason that God does this is so people will see that He is powerful, that it is Him who, who, who is powerful, that it is Him who is mighty, that it is Him that they should turn to. And if we as a church are failing to do that, then wala, wag na lang po tayo dito. Why? Because whatever God will do through our church, should be, uh, uh, ang conclusion dapat niyan is for us to proclaim it to other people. Sometimes, looking at it uh, uh, in a small uh, uh, scope, God does things to you personally. Mir- miracle sa buhay mo. God provided for something. God wants you to share it to the church. To proclaim it. Why? So that other people will be blessed. Kaya nga po may testimony time tayo. When God does something as a group, sa, for us as a group, as a church, God wants us to proclaim it to people around us. Why? Because that is what that is his end goal. That is what he wanted. Kaya nga sabi niya dito, do this, make a monument that the people of the earth, everyone might know the hand of the Lord. And I'm sure that if even if these Canaanites will see that, will see the power that God did through uh, the, the, the miracle that God did and turn to God in repentance, God will not ask them to kill them anymore. But because of the hardened hearts of people, of course, they didn't repent and God uh, asked them to, to, to annihilate these people, uh, some, some people. But again, if the reason why God is working through Israel is so that people will see His power and might and will come to Him in, in repentance and faith. Ganun po ang ginagawa ng, ng Panginoon sa buhay natin. As, as believers, I want to challenge you today. What are the great things that God did sa buhay mo? Are you sharing that to other people? Especially to your kids for us parents, especially to the people that will come after us. Are we faithfully relaying that to them? Are we saying, are we saying that this is what God did in our lives? Is it part of our conversation sa kanila? Or, 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 or sa atin, sa workplace, does it even come out of our mouth that God is good in our lives? Do we even have that kind of uh, uh, courage to share the word of God sa mga tao na, na inaalaw niya sa buhay natin. To tell them, you know, hindi po ako ganit, uh, I'm not this kind of person before, but the Lord has saved me. And look at me now, I'm serving Him by the grace of God. You know, through those testimonies, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying that those testimonies will save them, but those things can be used by God in order to say that your God is powerful, your God is mighty. And when it comes to a point in their life that kailangan nila, they would know who to turn to. Or baka hindi man nila kilala na tayo ay mga Kristiyano pala. Tayo ay mga tao na pinili pa lang panahon. Na tayo, kaya pala tayo nandito is to, as missionaries, hindi lang basta magtrabaho. Di ba? Kaya nga po minsan, yung mga, <coughs> mga uh, ibang denominations, daig pa tayo sa ganyan eh. Di ba? Sabi natin, nakakahiya naman. Hindi, hindi naman oras ng pagsishare, share ng share. Di ba? You know, that is the life, basically the life of Apostle Paul. Every chance he gets, he will share the gospel. Every chance at all. Kaya nga, God led you to, to visit someone who's sick. God wants you to share the gospel to him. God led you to, to work with these people. God wants you to tell them how great your God is. How powerful is what the great things that he has done in your life. Why? God will use it in order to, be, to save them as well. Kung nahihiya tayo, if we're failing to do that, then we're failing as a believer. We're failing as a church Paul. So God said to Israel, remember this day. Remember the great thing that I will do to you. Not only to remember, but tell others as well. Tell your kids and show other people the great things that I have done in your life. So I hope and I pray that this has been a, um, a somewhat of a challenge po sa atin and, and we have picked up principles this morning. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, pray, uh, we praise you, Lord, for this time that we have uh, 